research uh, in Shalendra Prasad, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, the Advisory Council of the Labour, Mr. Bhima Prasad, our senior staff, the head of um, uh, Singatoka Research Station, uh, Mr. Sabinal, um, our head of uh, the chemistry uh, soil testing um, section of the Ministry of Agriculture, Amit Sharma, our principal agriculture officer, farmers, ladies and gentlemen, in Bula Nakati World. Bula Bayalo. Thoradirina Namuna Miliki. Thorasantino. This place, Bila Lebu, um, also known as the Salad Bowl of Fiji, it's a renowned place. When we used to be in high school or primary school, we used to read about this place. <clears throat> this is a leading area with regard to horticultural crop production. And I want to take a moment to thank all of you, all the farmers of Bilalewu, for the hard work, perseverance, sacrifice <coughs> to ensure that we have balanced food reaching the tables of all households in Fiji. The vegetables from this area are transferred to the towns right up to Rekireki on this side in the western division and in the southern division it is transported to Suva, Sanatoka, Suva, Nagua, roadside stores and vegetables are also exported to Australia, New Zealand, America. It's amazing to see how uh, vegetables, fresh produce in particular, is finding its place in tables outside Fiji, thanks to globalization. We now have competing areas in Nandi, Latoka, Drasa, Ba, Bukuloa, um, Rekireki, and Suva as well, Central Division, where there are now increasing volumes of produce supplied to not only PG but external markets. Our produce are now also taking a firm position in hotels. And hotels are looking forward to sourcing agricultural produce from within PG. We have been having talks with the tourism sector, with the hotel industry. Just two weeks ago, I met the chief executive of South Fiji Hotel and Tourism Association, Ms. Fantasa Lokitel, and had a brief chat on reaching out to the hotel chefs, purchasing officers, and CEOs, and convincing them that there's nothing wrong in our fresh produce. They need to source locally. This is primarily to ensure that our money stays here. We don't uh, return the foreign currency that we get through exports and remittances and tourism back to those countries by buying fresh produce from those countries. We need to protect and keep the money here. Not only that, of course, when purchases are done locally, the households benefit, the workers benefit, the farmers benefit, the landowners benefit, other people who are supplying input to the agriculture sector will benefit. The beauty about agriculture sector is that it is, its multiplier effect is immense because a lot of people are involved. Unlike some of the urban uh, business activity, which is quite uh, low in terms of multiplier activity, agriculture sector's uh, multiplier effect is very high because a lot of people are involved. So when you create profit or surplus, then when a lot of people are involved, that surplus is distributed to these lot of people. To the extent that the agriculture sector kind of permeates into rural the periphery, where the normal urban industries don't exist. It is agriculture and tourism that is that you find in the periphery, in the interior, in the maritime. And in that way, income distribution takes place. And that is very vital very critical for any government. And our government is very particular about ensuring that all of us grow together. 
Well, no, no immaterial of whether you're in Kasi or Nakoro village or Undu Point or Isagos or Lomai Viti. All of us, we want to grow together. And that's the model of growth and development, growth model of our government. Is we want everyone to take everyone together in the growth process. And it is, that is why you see that level of interaction with ministers and prime minister is happening throughout the country when we go to uh, commission projects, um, you know, uh, push programs that we allow ourselves to uh, be interrogated by people, to open up for, you know, and because we want to get the feedback and that feedback is then pushed into the policy formulation and budget formulation. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we, uh, at the moment, uh, our export sector is doing extremely well. Um, all along, all along, when there was a discourse about agriculture sector, sugar used to be the main sector, sub-sector within agriculture. Reason why? Because sugar was bringing in a lot of foreign currency. And all of you know why we need foreign currency. We're an open economy. We can't function without foreign currency. We must have foreign currency holding, and it's called foreign reserve position. That's what foreign reserve position is. At every point in time, we must have foreign currency holding. Because when we import iron, corrugated iron, medicines, automobile, machinery, we can't pay using Fijian dollars. No one wants Fijian dollars. Australia, Australian supplier or American supplier or Japanese supplier for Toyota vehicles. So they want us to pay in the foreign currency. So we can only pay if we have foreign currency holding with this with the Reserve Bank. Reserve Bank can't print foreign currency. Reserve Bank can't print foreign currency. So Reserve Bank, where does Reserve Bank can get foreign currency? is we to export, so people pay us in foreign currency, Reserve Bank changes it, and through the banking system, pays you the equivalent Fijian dollar, the exporter from there. Or the tourist comes in, brings in the Australian dollars, books into one of the hotels, gives the uh, foreign currency, the hotel gives the equivalent of a Fijian dollars, that foreign currency is deposited in the bank, goes to RBM. Or someone sends remittance money, uh, rugby players, uh, you know, those who have migrated and are sending money to their family members, etc. And these are, this is how we get foreign currency. That's what is used to pay for our importation of services, goods, etc. During COVID-19, the entire tourism sector was closed. No tourism, nothing. It was agriculture sector which held the port. It was agriculture sector during COVID-19. So export is, <coughs> foreign currency is so important that whenever people used to talk about sugar, it was very important because it was bringing in a lot of money. Never people were talking about non-sugar agriculture, despite the non-sugar agriculture sector feeding the entire nation. But 2020, for the first time, non-sugar agriculture exports overtook sugar export ends. 2020, non-sugar export was $106 million. 20, sugar was $101 million. So non-sugar agriculture export surpassed sugar export. First time ever. Then in 2021, last year, Non-sugar agriculture exports further went up to $121 million, and sugar went down. Our leading export crops, kava number one, last year's figure, kava number one, $43 million. Dalo number two, $32 million. Turmeric number three, $24 million. And ginger, $14 million, number five. Turmeric, in a very short period of time, has taken third place. Third place. Now, it's important, and I'm urging farmers throughout Fiji that we need to 
be very mindful of our brand image of the products that we are sending outside. At the moment, our products have a brand image. Fijian Dalo, Fijian Kava, Fijian Turmeric. Our turmeric is 100% organic. Now that the turmeric is now becoming part of the crops that we plant, all along till now, the turmeric that we have exported is wildly harvested. So it's organic. But now that farmers are now getting into farming of turmeric, we need to ensure that we don't apply fertilizer or chemical and keep the turmeric that we export as organic. So the quality dimension rests in your hands. Rests in your hands. And we must ensure that we maintain our brand image. Ah, it's from Fiji. Then only it can, one, maintain and grow the space in the market, and number two, get the premium price from the market. So ladies and gentlemen, we want our farmers to rise up to this challenge of one, ensuring that we produce quality, um, you know, produce. And number two is we need to expand agriculture production, utilize the available resources, utilize the, the enormous amount of land that we have. In the same token, we are also pushing some of the imported produce that is taking away our foreign currency holdings that we are losing, and one is rice. Every year, we are importing $44 million worth of rice. Every year. Why are we importing rice? It's a crop that we can plant here, right here. And the crop that we, the variety that we are promoting now, is a short-term three-month variety. Right, friend? And I must say that this year we have seen a massive surge in production. For the last three months, we are continuously harvesting using, using about 15 harvesters. Still, we are not able to complete the harvesting in Vanuatu. Massive production on this side, towards Vainikoro. Traditionally, Bua and parts of Madhwata in Riketi, Mandevu, that area was a traditional rice growing area. But now, rice have expanded and overtaken sugar, overtaken sugar in the other side towards Vainikoro, Langalanga, Numbu, Kilikoso, Tandikula, Natambe, massive rice growing. They are landowners, Matangalis, who have completely switched from sugar to rice. Why? Returns are higher. Cash flow is not an issue because you can get cash within three months' time. Easier to grow. You can get two crops in a year. Minimum or three crops if the weather is good. And less issues than competing crops. But nothing wrong in sugar. Those who are growing sugar, we say, continue. But what we are saying, hive out one acre of land to grow rice. Same thing we are asking farmers in Valley Road, that allow, allow for one acre or half acre of land to be allocated for rice grain so that we can produce your own rice. And we are providing rice meal to every area so that you don't have to look for where you're going to mill your rice. Ladies and gentlemen, in this agricultural equation, technology is key. Without technology, without investment in technology, we will not be able to push the production frontier. There is a limit to the extent to which we can push productivity increases via basically simple changes in the farm. Beyond that limit, we need to introduce new technology, enhance enhance the fundamental binding constraints. And one of the fundamental binding constraints in agriculture is soil quality, soil fertility. And today we are here to launch a very important innovation and technology that is brought right to the farmer's field. No longer, no longer you have to travel to Singatoka taking your soil sample. No longer you have to submit your soil sample and then say that it is lost. No longer you have to uh, uh, talk to the uh, testers, the analysts, and discuss remotely. The soil testing will be done on your farm immediately. Sample will be taken immediately. 
we now have the pleasure to launch formally today a mobile soil testing uh, uh, vehicle which will be accessible to you anytime you want. We want our commercial farmers, semi-commercial farmers to take advantage to ensure you plant the right crop on the piece of land that you have. Or it gives you an opportunity to plan how you want to adjust the fertility of your soil because you will not, not now know what is the composition, fertility composition, nutrient composition of your soil. Without having a quality you know, a soil, you can't grow a crop with that particular yield. Your productivity will be affected, your production will be affected, the quality of your produce will be affected. Long time back when I was in the farming, you know, we, we used to see how um, truncated uh, pro products produced and growth used to be. And one of the co uh, contributing factor was lack of balanced nutrition in the soil. So ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure today to formally launch this mobile um, soil testing vehicle that uh, will be available at your doorstep uh, to test the soil and give you first hand information and interpretation of what is the status, what should be the fertility status of the various nutrients and micronutrients, and how you could enhance that and get your soil to that level for that particular crop. So our team will let, tell you what should be the fertility level if you want to grow okra or mbaygan or um, what I'm put. Just remember that number sixth of, uh, export crop is horticultural crops. So one is kava, two is dalo, three is turmeric, fourth is ginger, fifth is horticultural crops uh, that, that is exported. Um, so congratulations to the horticultural farmers in this area. So ladies and gentlemen, today I would want to emphasize to all of you that you need to ensure that you look after the quality and fertility and structure of your soil. Long-term growth and development of agriculture sector rests fairly and squarely on how you look after the uh, quality of your, your land, particularly the soil quality. Sustainable agriculture is critical and binding constraint to sustainable agriculture is quality land, fertile land, and uh, stru good structural structure soil. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's my pleasure to launch this uh, facility here. And it is not only for this area, but for throughout Fiji. And on the call of the farmers, we will be able to mobilize this. We will be having more of this uh, mobile um, testing laboratory, which will be available in Vanvalevu, in Southern Division, in the Western Division. But now, for now, we will prioritize you know, high um, vegetable uh, growing areas such as this. Thank you.